Have you ever wondered what it's like to raise the dead? I can't imagine anybody who hasn't been, who hasn't thought about it when playing any game that features them heavily. Like, for instance, Skyrim, you know, we all wanted to be there. We've all, we've all wondered how powerful it can be, and we see it depicted as a common villain in many movies. And this is probably a fate that most did not expect for Helmand Gorst. Young, a young boy with his brother in the heart of the Empire. They were, they were duped one day into Gorst killing his young brother, and then in his desperate search to bring him back, he fell to darkness. Thus enters Helman Gorst, one of the most under underappreciated additions to Warhammer 3. And back in Warhammer 1, Gorst was the first DLC um, alongside Volkmar the Grim, and he was received fairly poorly. He didn't really have many new mechanics, and he was just kind of like a copy-paste or like a necromancer that just... He was very weak. He didn't have many units that buffed up. You know, he loved his zombies, but he didn't buff them up as much as he should. Um, qu that quickly changed when uh, when the vampires came into Warhammer 3. I, I think they started, they did a rework that reworked him to where he was, you know, better. But then when they did some slight tweaks, added some new effects, and, pl and plopped him way the fuck away from from the other vampire counts, it made him it made him a lot better. It was a really good change. And now he's got so much buffs to his zombies that you can use these tier one units, even I would say up to tier two. You could even theoretically put them into tier three, but uh, there's a lot of other units that I usually use instead um, because their buffs start to weigh heavily in the in, in the middle of tier three. But you could easily still keep them around in the beginning of tier three when you're facing mostly the enemy has tier two or maybe some tier three units. But once they start to field all tier three units, they're going to be able to uh, just punch through because uh, unfortunately that exploit was fixed so as much as it is fun to build a doom stack of zombies brainless little you know biting zombies um it's not viable anymore and uh but it's still there's still very much a part of gorst's character and of course his lore and just it's it's a it's a vital part of him and today i'm going to dive deep into what makes Hillman Gorse so awesome and what how his how he was redeemed from how shite he was back in Warhammer 1. So let's dive into the video now, Strat fans. All right, so here we are with Hellman's starting screen. So Gorse starts with a pretty sizable army with five units of zombies, two crypt horror, well, two crypt horrors, two crypt ghouls, a black chariot, a black coach, and a corpse cart, as well as himself on a corpse cart with unholy lodestone. It's a very powerful combination with how Hellman buffs up his units. So he has um, a bound spell, less raised dead, on corpse cart and mortis engine units, which means each one that you have, which I usually by the end game have at least four mortis engines, well, three mortis engines plus Hellman. Um, it means that each one of those has a bound spell, laser raised dead, which means they can laze, they can raise more zombies, which are buffed up insanely by Hellman into the into the fray. So you can have an additional because each one can do two. I think each one has two uses, and Hellman himself can have more uses um, granted to them even more. So you can just you can keep spamming using your magic to raise more dead up and just overwhelm the enemy. That's how Gorst plays. Um, so his raise pool, raise dead pool is for, for zombies is plus four, casual punishment pl rate plus ten, which is good. It does cap at fifty percent, but Hellman has no problem with that, and he does also enables poison attacks for his zombies, skeletons, spearmen, and skeleton warriors. Don't have to do it on crypt horrors or crypt ghouls because they both have poison already. He's immune to plague attrition. His army is immune to contact effects, which is a huge buff, meaning flaming, sundering, any attack that causes a debuff does not affect him. And he also has 30 armor for his zombies and crypt ghouls units, which is insane as well. <clears throat> so he already starts pretty powerful. And the place he starts on the map, all the way over here, all you have is um, Kugath down here, the ogres up here, a few like minor forces, and then like Cathay. You know, I mean, you do have the... Uh, the um, Chaos Dwarves right here, but uh, they don't really push in, I've seen. Their AI doesn't really push that far, because they're mostly pushing west, uh, not east. So, let's get into the campaign, and I'll show you how he starts, and we'll walk you through his campaign. 
Unleash the gift of undead. We shall, Hellman. We shall. So again, he his his mechanics are not anything different than the than the <clears throat> than the uh, vampire count's main mechanics. He does still have blood kisses, you know, assassinate lords and faction leaders, fill them battle, um, to you know, awaken blood kisses, you know, factions vassalized and all those things to get them. He also he also has the raised dead mechanic and vampire corruption. Everything is pretty similar to standard vampire counts, but um, his playstyle is very different because he does not um, go for like the the high tier units. He goes for the low tier chaff. So again, he's, he'll start with some zombies. I usually get a few of these skeleton warriors as well. Um, always helps because again, all of these ones have immune contact effects and poison damage. So his entire army, minus his his like you know cart units. Are going to do poison damage now. His black coach, black coaches are incredibly, um, are incredibly powerful just by themselves. But then now they have immune to contact effects, so any contact effect, like I said, is going to be not going to affect him at all. Now, the, looking at these zombies right now, they're looking pretty shit. They have they have thirty armor, which they have zero at first. So that's that's decent. That's a little bit of something. So they're going to be able to take a little bit of damage. They have five melee attack. Count it. Five. Five. But if they successfully land a hit, they do a lot of they do a lot of poison, which means the enemy is going to lose their missile damage, weapon damage, armor piercing, all that stuff. They have six melee defense and eighteen weapon strength. Not a whole not very very powerful, is it? But the thing is, Helm and Gorst is on an unholy lodestone corpse cart, which gives a 0.5% healing. This other one is an unholy lodestone you start with. Gives another 0.05% healing. Together it's 0.10. This also has a uh, regeneration on it. I think, I think he does too. He does. Yes, he does. Um, he starts with the Invocation to Heck, of course. And I think they all have the... Um, they all have the Raised Dead on it. And then we're going to go into Gore's skills because this is where he really starts to shine. Now his top line is where he's going to shine for buffing up his, his units. Path to Ruin gives them already a speed buff which is really cool as well um as giving um gorst himself a speed buff unholy fury buffs up gorst as well as his zombies in all fact armies faction wide which means all zombies in all armies are going to have the these buffs now just listen closely here 12 plus 12 melee attack doesn't sound like much makes them up to 17 so they're still shit tier but at least they're better and then unnatural toughness 10% ward save. That's 10% of all damage for the zombies, all the armies faction wide, negated. Completely. Completely negated. That, that is insane. That is an insane buff for all the zombies in faction wide. Plus, zombies are dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. You know? So then we go up to Uncanny Resilience. Now, this is where it starts to get juicy. Hit points was 25% for Gorst, which adds a thou roughly 1,000, 1,500 health to him. Battle healing cap plus 50%. Battle healing cap plus 500% for zombie units. Did you hear me right? 500%. This is insane. It, it, it makes it to where you can just constantly out heal. And if you, it, gets, it gets better, just wait. Just hang on with me one, one moment. Ever onward gives these effects. The Dance Macabre plus 50% effect range. Decent. Minus magic cost minus 2 a nice nice little debuff makes it up to four wins of magic but then we get to the ravenous dead for zombies units all armies look at that heal 0.40 percent 0.4 percent that is an insane heal that's almost a full point uh, now for you for those of you that don't understand if it's a if it's one point anything that unit will heal like one one point of health every, every second so that is insane. 0.4. And then if you add in these these um, spells down here, like the Curse of Undeath, when he casts a spell, that's 0.05. You add in his cor his corpse cart, that's another 0.05. If you add two or three more corpse carts, that's another 0.05 to that. You can easily get up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7. It, it's insane. That is insane. 
And then, you know, you can get Thrall Master, which helps reduce their recruitment costs and raise dead costs. Master of the Dead, which allows you to awa awaken Graveguard instead. And, you know, it, and then Lord of, the, Lord of the Scourge, which increases the battle hap, cap, healing cap even more. So it is insane how, ins how, how crazy he can get with his skills. Um, and then, of course, you add Unliving Host. You get more melee attack and melee defense for zombies. You can easily get, easily get your zombies once you get Legions of the Dead. Up to 30 melee attack, which is a decent melee attack stat. They're going to be able to hit them consistently. They have a 30% chance every time. And then they have... that You can buff them up because, as well, Ever Onward gives them plus 50% weapon strength to all armies faction-wide for the zombies. That's insane. That buffs them up to at least 30 weapon strength as well. Which means not only are they going to be able to outheal and tank the damage, but they're going to be able to do a decent amount of damage to you as well. So, you know, it, it, this is how insane he can get. And this is just with zombies. Like, look, these zombies cost like 19, 19, 19 dark essence, dark magic to maintain. This is nothing. And it just, it goes to show how insane he, his campaign can be. And he is the master of blob tactics, the master. Um, like I said, you just double down these more these unholy lodestones, and then mortars engines have an even bigger effect, which can make the heal even in more insane. So that's just what I love about it is just how insane he can be with his overheals. Um, but one of the new units in the DLC can pretty much c cut his entire game off. So he does have more counters, but. Uh, he still does pretty well. So, first thing I do in in this campaign would be to, of course, yes. attack this Skaven, Destroy little sneaky them. Skaven here. Decisive victory, slap him down, get some juicy XP, and then, you know, get some dark magic, and we'll get a blood kiss as well, so we can unlock another dark lord. First things first, we have to wait till rank twelve to unlock the path of path to ruin. But once we get that. We're going to just blaze towards these four. That's what we want. We're going to get an invocation of the heck first because it's our heal. It's a nice, it's a nice heal, 0.80% heal, which is really good. Couple that already. <laughs> like I said, you can go insane, and and uh, I think he has, he actually uh, reduces the cooldown. Yeah, he reduces the cooldown and uses as well. So six percent. Um, and the Winds of Magic costs for upgraded up to five. And then this one reduces it a second time to four, which is insane. But, of course, um, he also has Reliquary Corruption, meaning that he'll deal damage to people around him. And then Vigor Mortis increases melee attack and defense around him as well. So anywhere you want to keep him, you want to keep Gorst in all of his carts in the front to buff up the troops uh, not just to heal them but to buff them up and get them to where they'll be able to do more damage and take less so um, he starts with a with a um, with a right king which I actually I put in my in my army because <clears throat> you need something to like deal with enemy lords because this strat is good the blobs track tactics are good but if the enemy can snipe um, Gorst who is very vulnerable on his um, corpse cart um, then they're going to be able to knock you up because you start with only 5k health, 45 armor, not, not a whole lot, really good stats. And, you know, you have regeneration, but you don't really, and, and you have, and you have this little, um, damage, uh, <coughs> this damage effect right here, but it's not going to do so much against single combatants. So lords are going to, are going to kill you. So that's why I keep a right king to deal with the enemy lords. He does magic damage. There's a whole lot, lot of anti-infantry damage, but, you know, he can still serve his purpose as a melee specialist, and I put him against enemy lords. It can save, it can save Gorse so many times when a, when a lord is charging straight for him to have that right king do it, and then you can just blob over the, the two of them fighting, and eventually you'll get, you'll kill him. Alright, so now he starts with the Haunted Force, which is a really nice starting location, because it's right at the edge of the map here. So you don't have to go for anywhere further. You could just, you know, sit back here if you want. 
but uh, I usually do a little bit of, you know, fighting with the Skaven here, maybe go against the Ogres or go against the Lizardmen here. So it starts with uh, the Desecrated Grove, which gives him a nice recruit rank for zombies and crypt ghouls and stuff. And then, you know, Crumbling Hamlet. Hamlet is really is what they start with. Um, I usually go for the growth, Foster Terror. Um, you, you'll start with a commandment because it's a one settlement province. It's a magical forest, which he can inhabit, by the way. Which means he can inhabit places that uh, other vampires can't quite, quite, quite easily. Now, I'll go for the Book of Arkin first for research. Just because, um, you know... You buffen up the the zombies even more, like you, the right the dead rise again plus twenty five percent speed for zombies. Those zombies are going to be lightning fast, you know. They're going to be lightning fast down the field of battle. Now um, for bloodlines, again, I I you can pretty much go wh wherever you want because most of Gorse buff buffs ready. the buffs that he does, other than immune to contact effects. Um, is going to be for all armies faction wide so he's gonna it, it doesn't really matter you're going to be having the same play style no matter what lord you choose but if i were to choose i would do either a lamian one or a necrarch so i can get because you want to have more magic um i would not do strigoi because you're not going to have a lot of ghouls um von karstein would be nice as well but and not do blood dragon just because you're not going to be using blood knights or anything like that you're going to be using magic to heal up your zombies. You know, pretty pretty standard stuff. All right, and then take our last last bit of move to take this settlement here, get a little bit a little bit more XP, and uh, secure some territory. That way we can get the curse of undeath. I could do forbidden scripture. It's really good at ki getting more research rate. But again, we're not going to be really researching that much. That that buffs up our zombies as much. So I'm going to do Curse of Undeath. It's another heal. It's going to help out a lot. And always, you can see, buffing. We're we're getting fully replenished almost in, almost immediately. So, all right. I don't have enough there. So we'll just recruit some more um, zombies just naturally. All right, and that's pretty much how turn one goes. Again, um, you'll try to want to consolidate Noblar country here. Maybe go down here, deal with Kugeth at the at the at the pit down there, and go up the mountains of Morn. Just be careful that uh, you know you don't go too fast, because uh, Grimgor is up there and he could cause um, a good scrap against you. So um, you want to be careful. Again, build up the haunted forest. Take take some time to conquer the. The minor factions here, and like there's not many big factions, so um, you shouldn't have too much issue. Even against Kugath, who is known for his, well, Nurgle, who's known for his uh, healing, Gorse just outheals him. He, he does. He outheals him, and with the buffs he gives to his skeleton, to his zombies, you're going to be able to kill Nur Nurglings no problem. Because poison doesn't affect you, but it affects them. So um, now that pretty much wraps up the, uh, the beginning phases of the campaign i'm going to play a little bit through and i'll meet you at a tier one so let's i'll meet you there guys all right and here we are with our first engagement so um i i kind of looked around kept looking around f to find a good engagement and uh, i finally found nurgle here just sitting back here collecting some units so he's got some okay troops for his tier Kugath does, but he's very under under leveled, and even though it says we'll have a Pyrrhic victory, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have um, a better victory than than him because they're demon units. They're gonna do a lot of damage, but uh, we can out heal them because we have two unholy lodestones. We don't have our healing cap unlocked yet, but uh, for tier two, we definitely will have that. Um, but uh, right now, we're still gonna do pretty well because we do have our immune to contact effects. And Gorst has been leveling up an insane amount to where he has almost all the spells now. So he's going to be really overpowered. Um, and then we have the right king to deal with uh, this hero here, the Plague Ridden or Kugath himself. Um, Nurgle is not known for their speed. So, and neither are we. So, so it's going to be a little, a little, uh, 
a little tragic getting in, getting set up, but uh, I think this will be a, good, a fine fight for our first tier show off. So we have a bunch of z zombies. I pretty much just filled to the brim with zombies. We have 14 units of zombies um, and two units of crypt, ho crypt ghouls, two units of crypt horrors to do some damage. And then, of course, our black coach and two unholy lodestone corpse corpse cards. So um, let's get into the battle here and we'll show you how good this tier one does against tier one Nurgle. All right, here we are on the battlefield. So um, again, we just have a huge line of zombies. Now it would be more tactical to um, to to try to keep them um, in the same circle and blob them up more, so um, that you can uh, get them with the corpse cart and just keep them healing. Um, we're facing Nurgle, so we don't have to worry about any projectiles picking us off or any big things but we could have we could worry about some spells so i think what i'm gonna do because kugath um i don't know if he has his spells i can't see from here but if he does then um he's gonna be a problem but as you see our corpse cart has lesser raised dead gorse himself um we have all of our zombies up here and then we have our crypt ghouls on the sides crypt horrors in the back our black coach is right here. It's going to do some heavy damage to um, to the Nurgle forces. It does have magic attacks. The um, zombies do not, but they have poison, which is going to weaken the enemy. Um, and the enemy's poison does, will not weaken us. So let's start our deployment and um, start the battle. Swiftly. Stream of corruption, I see. Invocation of the heck. Oh shit, my uh, my guys are dying there. I do need to get my save my wind spell up. It shall be done. Across the whole of the line, though, we are still winning. I'm gonna send the right king off to deal with Kugath himself. All right. Yep, they're they're routing. So our our guys are wavering too. Well, they're shaken. So it's because we don't have enough corpse carts. That's why. We might lose some units, but it'll be fine. Nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save up. Maybe do some invocation of the hex. I need to get it upgraded. Oh, I can't currently overcast. Okay. Let's heal them up some more. But we are healing, and uh, we're starting to to pull this this balance of power up out of our butt. Okay, there we go. Now the enemies are starting to, to, to decompose, which is good. Like I said, all we have to do is just like get them to get them to decompose, get them to banish, and we're gonna win this. You know, That's all we need to do is get them to banish, and then we win. So, yeah, but they have to banish before we do. Whoa, Jesus. Oh, our that was our that was our summoned unit. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that was our summoned unit. Alright. Heal them up. So much death. Alright. Our unholy lodestone is healing up these guys. The immune to con the contact effects does come in mighty handy against them. Especially against Nurgle. Yeah. All right, we're starting. We're starting to get them killed, which is good. All right, Gorst, get in there. Oh, get out of there, actually. Yeah, our crypt horrors are doing the, the the Lord's work right now. 
We haven't really lost that many either. Either. Our overheals are insane. Like the the AI the uh, the AI and the um, the Total War uh, prediction <laughs> wizard of the auto resolve will often just put stats like flat out stats at over over uh, you know abilities. Oh Jesus, Kugat's kicking my right king's ass. Jesus, get out of there. Get out of there. Now, all we gotta do is, um, oh, where's my black coach? Mm. There we go. Start, starting to have a lot of them uh, decompose or banish. So that's good. Helmengorst, his area of effect for his Lone Holy Lodestone is a lot bigger. And then he can actually increase the radius um, for all Corpse Cards units, which is really cool. Alright. So now, we're going to send these guys in to help these guys here. These guys will help these guys. So we just kind of swarm them after that. We could try swarming Kugath, but I think he'll do too much damage. We don't have enough heals yet. So we're just going to hopefully kill all of his forces, and then that will rout him, and then he'll die. With haste. We actually haven't lost any units fully, either. We haven't. Swiftly. We've lost a few, um, a few entities, but overall we haven't lost that many units. Again, we're just like slowly o enveloping them all and then they're decomposing or banishing. Once they banish, then we just go in and fight the other. See, there's, there's Kugath. He's banishing. He's banishing. And we only lost about 3k, I'd say. And we killed well, 300. We lost like 300. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go after Kugath now. Um, except for the Right King. And, uh, of course... The lodestone's gonna go right over here. With haste. With haste. Yeah, just have to, cause willing him down by his banish is not going to be enough. He's flinging his nerglings at my guys. All right, let's go. All right, black coach, get that single entity out of there. Let's just out heal his damage that he does, and slowly we'll, you know, wither him away. Yeah, Helman Gorst is healing up all these units with his lodestone effect. Like, see, we're slowly healing up, tick tick that's a huge tick see it gets to the point where you're going to be able to to heal up units in the counter yeah he's uh he's gonna die we just don't have that much heals but once we get that heal which i guarantee you tier two is not going to look like this it's not going to be as scary going up against it with the you know the auto resolve like that you're like oh, oh oh no i'm not going to be able to kill them all then you know, you, you whip out your zombies and you're like, oh shit, my zombies actually killed them all, you know? They they just, they're going to be able to out heal anything. So, that was, that was all, <laughs> that's all that, that's all she, that's all folks. That's all she wrote for Kugath. So, um, again, that's a tier one. So now I'm going to play a little bit more of the campaign. I'll meet you all at a tier two. Right, and here we are with a tier two. So for this one, I've I've attacked the ogres in the mountains. Um, I've been blowing piss, greases, and I encountered this guy uh, just sitting here collecting units. So I'm going to engage him now. Attacking ogres, the ogre bulls are still pretty powerful, and they're a really really powerful unit. But here's the kicker: I've unlocked all of my most of my buffs for my zombies. So I have the tithe here, which is an insane. A ma mass of zombies that does they have already have 15 armor so they have 45 now and they're actually pretty good for a zombie unit 
All the zombies have their ward save. They have physical resist. The tithe has 40% because it has already has 20. And then this is 20%. But they all have the ravenous dead. This is insane. Plus 4.4% heal. Just insane when they're in melee. So, again, this is an all melee army. We're going to do very well against these guys. And, um, <laughs> and you're about to see um, how, how insane the Caravan of Blue Roses can be in in tier two so let's get into the battle all right here we are on the battlefield so um the now that we've unlocked a technology that allows the zombies to have um to have vanguard deployment we can actually put them closer to the enemy um than than us so i'm going to actually keep them right about here that way our troops can go all together um i will group them all together as well um, just so that, you know, we can have a good amount because we need these crypt horrors. You're, you're going to need a damaging unit because they don't give as much, much buffs for damage and they don't have enough healing buffs to l really out, da out heal the damage that, you know, more advanced troops do. So you're going to need a damaging unit to help out, um, with the zombies. Um, and that's what the crypt, um, horrors do. So for tier two. That's what the Crypt Horrors do. So, um, we're going to do a Crypt Horror and then a Unholy Lodestone, uh, Quartz Cart, Black Coach in the back. Um, like that's how we're gonna. That's how we're gonna do this. And then, of course, Gorst is going to be in the center with the with the coat with the coach, Black Coach. All right. So that will be that, and we're going to group them all together, lock their positions. All right. Let's move forward. If you insist. Again, all melee army. Don't have to worry about missiles. So, the biggest problem with this composition and any vampire composition is dealing with missiles. Missile troops are probably the bane of a vampire's existence. We actually don't have as many troops as them. We have we have less troops than them. Let's uh let's advance the time all right let's just keep moving keep advancing wait for them to make the attack there we go. Noblar's moving in first. you get to see this in action the out heals that's a, look at that look at that it's out healing the damage that they do out healing it that is insane in and then I could just do this oh shit no 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 fuck no no god damn it fucking Jesus I hate misclicking. I hate it. 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 God damn it. Well, we don't really need it. But yeah, if we need reinforcements, we could just blop, blop up some, some zombies from the corpse carts. Blop. And these zombies, they don't have the same buffs, but uh, they're still pretty good. Oh, I almost have one again. Oh, please give me another chance. I could do it, Master, if you give me another chance.
The night is yes, ours. thank you. Alright, let's do this. Wind of death time. Wind of death time. Woo! There we go. There's some kills. A little bit of kills. Not not bad. Not great either. But look at that. Look at how we just decimated these ogres. Didn't even really do anything. Just kind of let them, let them like swing on our zombies. And our zombies are healing up. Look at them. They're healing back up. I think they can even resurrect. No, they can't resurrect. That's okay. That effect won't re resurrect, but they still are healing up more. Because it is insane. With haste. All right. Um. Well, yeah, those zombies are not meant to stay. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. Always forget which corpse card is which. Which corpse card is this? Oh, this is this one. Okay. Let's pull you up. Alright. The living will join us, huh? It just looks like a mess, but it we're doing really well. Doing really, really well. And again, don't worry about losing these generated um, zombies because they don't matter. Our zombies are doing just fine. They're at full health. Full health, man. This is insane. Look how crazy this is, man. I swear. A couple corpse carts. You're able to get the unholy lodestones. Figure Mortis and the Raven is dead to where you're just going to be able to heal up so fast. Outheal anything, any damage the enemy does to you. Any damage. Oh, these guys still keep rallying too. Oh, there goes the enemy. And we lost like 50 guys, 50 zeds. It's insane. This is an insane strat. And it does very, very well. And again, um, towards Tier 3, I start to lighten the load on the zombies. Um, because, you know, you're going to have a lot less... Uh, well, you're going to have a lot more enemies with, like, Tier 3 units. And those units are going to be able to chomp through faster than you're able to heal. But, like, look, these zombies already healed back up to full. They did. We, we have, like, one unit that took some damage. And the zombies lost a few entities, but, you know, they still were able to regenerate. So, the and these guys here, they have regeneration, so they're going to be able to regenerate here. Ten, so they have a 15%. While well the, well the zombies have a, a 40% and a 5%, so a 45%. And then, of course, they have the Vigor Mortis, which, in, which reduces their vigor, well, increases their vigor and increases their melee attack and defense so they're doing really well so that's a that's a tier two everybody so now i'm going to go back to the campaign map play a few turns and then i'll uh i'll catch you guys back with a tier three all right and here we are with a tier three so now um i've gone all over the map just killing and just pillaging to get my army up to the strength that it's at so um <laughs> we have we're going up against quite a weak force actually because um, the Legion of Asgore hasn't gotten many Chaos Dwarf units yet. Um, they still have a good amount. Um, especially with the gar garrison helping them out. So it will give us a bit of a scrap. But anywho, um, our, looking at our army. Helmand is pretty overpowered right now. His right king is pretty overpowered too. So he's buffed up to, to crap. And then he's got four Grave Guard with great weapons. These got, are going to be our heavy hitters. Um, I do also have Karn Wraiths, but you could do either or. I just don't really like using the Wraiths, even even though they have insane physical resist. It's just, it's very too, it's too situational for me. Um, the physical resist is 
completely negated by anybody who has a magic attack. Like, um, Drezhoeth here, his, any of his magical abilities, they have magic attack, gonna go right through the Karn Wraith's armor no matter, no matter what. And they have nothing to back it up with. They have no armor. So, um, that's why I don't like using them outright, even though they do do, uh, they do do a decent amount of damage, and they have a decent melee attack with Frostbite, and, um, their physical resist is really good. Um, I just usually pref prefer Graveguard because armor is, you know, it's it's the best one to fall back on. And then of course, we have our zombies. Um, I usually keep at least six to eight um, in his last army um, until you start seeing heavy concentrations of tier three units. Then I replace them with Graveguard. But um, until that point, you know, benefit from the, from the um, bonuses that you get. And then finally, we have four Mortis engines, which... You know they're they're all going to they're not going to stack, but being able to cover the line with mortis engines is great, and also they do magic attacks, which means they're going to be able to trump any any physical resist army. Um, they have this effect too, the blasphemous tome, which is going to increase your power recharge, and they do damage over time with this effect, this mortis engine effect, the will of Corey corruption that Gorst has as well. So let's go dive into this battle against the Legion of Asgore. All right, so here we are in the battle. Now, I forgot that it was a minor settlement battle, um, so it's going to be a little bit tougher, but uh, we still can can use this. To, we can still show off the advantages of this strat. Um, we're just going to... It's going to be tough keeping the uh, the mortis engines with the uh, the army. So, again, we have the zombies up front. You know, just... And look at look at how many stat... How their stats are compared to how they started. It's pretty decent. Um, they're, they're still... A tier one unit but they've been buffed up to make them like a tier two um or at least tier ones of a better of a better race um so they have of course the raven is dead and all of this other but all these other buffs plus because they all have got this rank they have increased weapon damage increased uh melee attack as well as some spell resist too so this will help a whole lot against enemy spells in the back, we have our Wraiths and our um, Grave Guard, which is, you know, going to be great. Um, and then, of course, Hellman right here leading. He's got his Undeath Resurgent, which is going to give a huge melee defense buff. Um, he's got his Wind of Death, which is all the way down to 12 for, for it. Um, so he's going to be able to cast it a lot. And, of course, the Morris Engines are going to buff up the Magic Reserve even more. So let's start the battle. All right, we're gonna start moving in. Mortish engine, that is wise. It is done. Let's move these mortis engines up here. These ones up here. Deal with the Infernal Guard. All right, we're just we're going to be able to out heal them insanely because we now have the Mortis Engine effect on them, and then if we get into melee, we're going to be able to out heal even more. Wow, this Mortis Engine took a lot of took a beating. It took a beating from those ranged units. No contact effects, even though we're on fire. Mortis engine. All right, let's get in there, cause some damage. Yeah, let's get in there. Goblin laborers. Kill them, get them. We do have the effects that we can disrupt their stuff, but I don't think I need that. I am going to cause a whole bunch of death with Wind of Death. This is perfect. I don't think it's going to work on the, uh, the Kedai. Oh, my lord. Look at that. That did a whole lot of damage to the Goblin Laborers, and they're going to rout.
That's up their melee defense up. Then I can get my area of effect. The heck. To heal them up even more. That's the thing, is we gotta make sure um, we get the blunderbusses. Because they're going to they're going to really be a problem if we don't. Yeah, there we go. Keep them from firing. If you can keep them from firing, then uh, we're going to do very well. Let's see. I don't think I need this, but uh, it'll be nice to cause some damage. Get some units killed. Oof. Yes. Yes. Oh, my lord. Yes. There we go. And the blunderbusses are gone. Not his engine. So much death. And here comes the fireborn. Let's cast some more heals. Maybe heal up that mortise engine too. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, he has the what is it? The curse of a shoot. Yeah, they're going to cause some direct damage, but it's good against you know those. So I have to credit the AI for doing that. These Kadai are about to die, and then that's pretty much all she wrote. Now we can combine ourselves into one massive unit and just go after them, you know? Again, blob tactics rule um, in in these guys' playbook. Blob tactics rule. Alright, let's do another Wind of Death. Yeah, just to cause some more chaos. We have the magic for it, so might as well, you know? Oof. Damn, that's a lot. Alright, Hobgoblin Archers, that's gonna cause some problems. They, he keeps doing the Curse of Shoot. I, I'm, I'm just... I don't know why. Alright, let's get those dead raised up to stop those goblin ar Hobgoblin Archers from doing that. A unit has been wiped out. Oh, is that... that's probably the, uh... That's probably the zombies. The risen zombies. Oh, okay, so they're just gonna retreat. Okay. Yep, they're retreating. <sighs> you can retreat all you want, bro, but, uh, you know, eventually you're gonna have to stand and fight somewhere. And there's Drazoth. He keeps casting that, and we keep rehealing after he casts it. So I don't know what he wants to do. I'm basically healing up my guys, my my uh, mortis engines, just do just because. Yeah. I'm gonna head for this because, you know, that's the main control point. If they don't want to head towards me, they don't have to. Well, let's go towards here, actually. We have a fast-moving... We have fast-moving infantry, so... Let's see. One, we charge one power every three seconds, but we don't have any reserve. Pretty much expelled our reserve, but that's okay. That infernal Castellan could cause some trouble. Let's cause some trouble for him. Yeah, 
There we go. Oh my lord. It's just like a tithe of bodies. It is just a wave of bodies. It's like a zombie apocalypse. You know? It's zombie apocalypse in Warhammer. You know? Because you're just overflowing the enemy with zombies and, you know, insane units. And it's insane that you're able to do this, you know? In the first place, it's insane that you can do it. But then on top of it, add how insane the units actually are. It makes it worse. Alright. Alright, right King. Let's see if you can take out that Castellan. Yeah, let's take out that Castellan. I'm just gonna, after I kill the Castellan, or at least weaken him severely, um, yeah, he's, he's almost gone. Okay, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's go head towards this supply tr point. That's the thing, is their vigor is constantly being, you know, redone. Oh, wait, no. No, the, uh, it's the unho unholy. It was the unholy lodestone corpse carts that were doing that. The uh, the reliquary binding doesn't do that. I don't think. All, right, all the mortis engines are up there because they're faster. Let's keep advancing. We took this point back. Alright, and Drazoth is retreating. Ah, oh, would you look at that? They're still still getting it back somehow. I don't even know how. I don't see a unit there. Drazoth is shattered. There we go. And that's and that's how it goes. Okay. Finally. <laughs> Sorry, Strat fans. These minor settlement battles can be a little taxing. But uh, anyhow, that's that's the uh, that's the tier three. We did very well. Um, zombies took basically nothing. Um, so even against chaos dwarves that have a lot of magic, which can and, and flaming attacks too, which can normally kill zombies pr pretty easily. Um, with the imbuement of magical attacks and poison attacks, they do so much damage. So um, that'll 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 do it. Now let's wrap this up. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, Strat fans, so I hope you guys enjoyed this look into the insane gameplay of Helmand Gorst. He is just, he's really overpowered with his zombies. That can, it, the fact that he can elevate a tier 1 unit to such immense property, it just, it, it's insane. And, you know, his po combined with his poison, immune, immune to contact effects, armor that he gives his zombies, and, uh, you know, the, the overheals, of course, he just is so overpowered. But he was nerfed recently. Um, to where he doesn't have as many bonuses, so his zombies aren't uber effective in the late, late game, but he can still do pretty good early, mid, and early, late game. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and as always, remember, if you like what I do, to leave a comment down below. Maybe tell me how, how, how much you like the channel. Leave a like. Maybe uh, hit that notification button, too, so you can see all my other guides and all my other reviews that I'm coming out with. And, uh, you know, maybe say, sub to the channel, become a str loyal Strat fan as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, remember to keep it strategic. Colonel out.